Your hat looks stupid. Arr. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Punctured Media, our friends at Top Sport and Zero Fucks Clothing. Dan, we are less than 60 days away from Rugby League. 59 too many, Terry, but I'm excited. We're, we're here, we're, we're bringing you all the news around Rugby League and Dan and I's uh, predictions for signings this year. We're going to talk about 15 quality teams. We'll also talk about the Tigers as well. Terry. Talk to me, Dan. We'll start at the top now. I mean, alphabetically the top, yep. not how we think teams will go. Because, spoiler, the Broncos aren't going to do overly well. Brisbane, top signing. Who you got? i got Kurt Capewell. Now, I think uh, everyone's going to say the obvious is Adam Reynolds, but is a 32-year-old halfback on a deteriorating knee at around about $900,000 a year your best signing? Probably not. I'm going to pick the guy who's playing state-of-origin football, won a premiership, Pretty elite player, Kurt Capewell. Well, when you put it that way, it makes me feel a little bit silly in saying I think Adam Reynolds. Purely because outside of him, name one first grade half they have. Oh, look, I mean, I think last year Albert Kelly had a really good year, but it was disrupted by injuries. Tyson Gamble played really well against Cronulla. But again, you're talking about who is going to partner Adam Reynolds in the halves. And when you can't turn around and say, it's definitely going to be this person, that's what makes up. Now, all the talk was Katoni Staggs. Yes, I was sold on Katoni And they re-signed him at 5-8 money as well. And they put him into the centres. Now, we'll talk more about the Broncos, unfortunately, later. But as it stands, it's Reynolds and... Yeah, I don't know who it's going to be. For mine, I really like to pick up a Kurt Capel, though. Um, and the thing is now is, when he was at Cronulla, you kind of didn't know what his role was, and he was always a Mr. Fix-It. But That's now, cool. he's a very, very dangerous edge-back rower. His defence has picked up significantly... And he's still a Mr. Fix-It. I really like that signing. Good footballer, good signing. Not yeah. going to argue with you too much, but Reynolds, purely on. They needed him. They got him. Good signing. Mm. We'll see how it goes out. Yeah. Uh, Dan, we've got the Canberra Raiders next. Now, I don't know too many signings that they made, uh, but for mine, it's got to be Jamal Fogarty. Well, it, it almost by default. Yeah. If, if someone Adam Elliott from the Bulldogs, uh, yeah. a bit of a risk there. And Nick Kotrick's coming back, which I think is a good pickup because... He, he looked good in Canberra. As soon as he left that system, he looked pretty terrible. Not many have looked good at the Bulldogs, but still, you, you, for me, it's got to be Fogarty. Yeah, for mine, it's Fogarty as well. Look, you've got to turn around and you've really got to give it to Nick Kotrick. He asked the Raiders for elite-level money. They said no. He went to the Bulldogs. For one year, he's gone back to the Raiders on elite-level money. They've guaranteed his whole contract. That's incredible. He, he went to prove Mate, him wrong. Yeah. They were right and he still got the money yeah. out of them. That's good, Dad. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I don't know about the giving up Bailey Simonson. You and I are going to talk about Bailey Simonson later. But certainly are. Yeah, look, look, good move for Kotrick to get back into the familiarity of Canberra. I, I, th I think Jamal Fogarty is going to do a job for the Rays. I don't think it's going to be enough for them to get in the finals, though. No, look, me neither. And spoiler alert, we will talk about that in the coming weeks. But, uh, you know, Whiten and... Yeah. This is... The yeah. answer at seven. And not elite level, but I, I think he's a good footballer. Yeah, he'll do a job for him. And geez, he's in some good shape. Yeah. Hey. Who's next? Bulldogs. Now, they've signed about 36 players. So this one was difficult, and I don't think we're going to agree. I don't think we're going to agree either. I really wanted to go with a forward because the Bulldogs needed some forwards, and they did sign two handy forwards. Unfortunately, they're about like one beer away from being in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. My best signing for the Bulldogs is Josh Adekar. An astute signing. Sign to play fullback. We'll play on the wing. Yeah, look, I think one of the one of the areas why I've picked him over Matt Burton. Now, obviously, they needed a playmaker because, again, you're talking about who are the halves going to be at the Bulldogs. It's going to be Matt Burton and and Matt Burton has shown that he's quite a handy centre as well. That's true. But one of the things that you had to look at that Bulldogs team. Team scored tries on them from 70 metres out because they were slow as a wet Wednesday. Mm -hmm. This guy. He's got speed to burn. Also got Matt Dufty with lots of speed as well, and Brent Naden, but Josh Adakar, State of Origin winger, best winger in the game. For mine, he's their best signing. It's a great signing. They've got five big name, really good signings. You're right, a lot of them, and I've written about it extensively. One big night or a barbecue, yeah. let's hope it doesn't happen and their, their season ends. But for me, Matt Burton is class, and he's a player, a kind of player rather, that the Bulldogs haven't had for years. Mm -hmm. who, was their like, who was their last great half? I mean, on his day, in his form, it was 
probably Brent Sherwin. See, Premiership, Sherwin was Premiership the first winning half. name that came to mind. With all due respect... Or an Asta. So even so, in how many times was he voted the most overrated player? Mm. I think Matt Burton is a quality six. You're right about him with the centre. If it doesn't work at the six, put him in the centres. Yeah. You got one of the game's top three centres. Addo Carr, Burton, I don't think you can go wrong with either. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with those two then. Now, next we're going to talk about our beloved Sharks. And I think you and I are going to disagree on this one as yeah, well. Yeah, this could get heated too because could... I've been on record as saying we signed the best crop for need next year. Yeah. I think the Bulldogs have signed better the, overall. The Bulldogs had the best go out and get as many players as you can to rebuild. Cronulla, Cronulla avoided a rebuild. We did. We signed for what we needed. And yep. I think we've got the three signings. I'm going to throw a fourth name in there later on in the Sharks segment. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert again. But... Uh, for me, it's Nico Hines, and I don't think that's a great surprise to him. Yeah, look, I, it, the easy thing for me to do would be agree with you and say Nico Hines because cool, he's beautiful Nico Hines. and he, he's an incredible footballer. I've gone for what Cronulla really, really needed, and that was a professionalism and a change in culture and someone to just come in and not take any of the crap that our, our players have got away. So for that, I went for Dale Finucane. It's fickle. Yeah. His, his signing was great. And unlike in past years, we haven't signed. Oh, cool. Johnson's a big signing. No one else wanted him. Yeah. Everybody wanted Dalphin. Yeah, every- everyone wanted Nico Hines. There were a couple of clubs that came out after we signed and said they wanted Cam McInnes. Yep. I think everyone assumed, myself included, mm. that he was just going to re sign. Yep. If he went to market, I think seven or eight clubs come in. Yeah, I, honestly, as well. And you're talking about Cam McInnes, but if Cam McInnes had gone to market in the new year, Cronulla got him. Before Christmas, yeah, or no, no, so we got him early February. It was, it was just after because we yeah. were trying to get him for the season, Fe- yeah. February 2nd, we signed him on my birthday. But I think if he went to market during the year, and let's throw a hyper- hypothetical situation that hadn't torn his ACL, but you're talking about teams that need a dummy half, the Tigers would have been in there for him, the Dogs probably would have had a crack and not thrown some money elsewhere. The Titans need a number nine, spot on. We we got in now. Look, I, I think. Fitzgibbon, so Fitz, yeah. is the greatest signing across everything this season. We're keeping it players only. For me, Nico Hines. Darth Nico Hines. <laughs> uh, the Gold Coast Titans. Now, look, they had their big off-season recruitment splurge last, last season. <laughs> no uh, money left. Yeah, I, I didn't really... I couldn't remember if they had signed anyone or picked anyone up, and I knew that they released Fogarty. And then you tell me that they had picked up Isaac Liu, and that completely slipped my mind. I really thought he was getting up at Cronulla, Isaac Liu. He's a, he's a really good pickup for the Titans, but I don't think he's what the Titans need. I'm trying to disagree with you to keep the flow going, but I can't. He, he was the best signing they made because yep. he's the only real name that'll he'll start round one. Good signing. Mm-hmm. I think the money they're reported to pay him is way over the top. They didn't need a prop. No, they didn't need a pro. He's spent a lot of time at lock at the Roosters, but Tino is their lock. Tino is the rusted on 13 for as long yeah. as he wants. And then Mo Fodawaka, uh, Jermaine yeah. Jolliffe, Sam Lasoni, all these guys. Are, and I know they got him for his experience and he's won premierships, and that, but he's not a player who's been a big part of... You like you haven't gone back to a Roosters grand final and gone, geez, they won that on the back of Isaac Liu. That's true. You know, they, they, they won their grand finals on the back of Jared Weir Hargraves, Latrell Mitchell, Joey Manu. You know, the big yes. kind of experience. And I know he came off the bench and did a job. That's all he's going to do at the Titans. Look, that's true. I think in terms of signings... It's okay. It's, it's, a good, it's a good one, and it's definitely their best. Again, though, I think they'd trade him and a lot more for a superstar number nine. Yeah, exa- exactly right. Like, if, he, if Isaac Liu had gone to the Sharks and Cam McInnes had gone to... The Titans. Oh, that would have made a lot Titans of sense there. That, that, that would have made a lot of sense there. But we wouldn't be calling Isaac Leo our best signing. No, absolutely not. It doesn't make sense for mine for the Titans. No, it, um, mm, mm. they've got $6 million of a $10 million cap, or roughly, yeah. in their forwards. So let's add another big name forward. I don't know. Yeah. And let the halfback go. Anyways. Yeah, anyways. yeah but Toby Sexton. Toby, Toby Sexton. Sexton. Uh, great. Really good name, by the way. Uh, Manly. Now, look, we've both agreed on the signing for Manly. I actually think he's going to be the cheap signing of the year, a la Isaiah Yeah, the bargain. Yeah, the bargain. 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 Yeah. I, don't hate I don't hate the signing. I think he's a player origin. He's a very good player. And look, mm. we've had players that weren't very good go to Miami and become superstars. 
Mm. You know, Des Hasler's got that. Uh, he, he misses, but yeah. he hits more than he misses. I like this signing for them. They've got a brilliant young mm. forward pack. Players that you, you didn't even know last year and now like, oh, well, their first player's big. Yeah. So I, I'm really excited to see. I hope he goes well. I hope Manly go badly, so yeah. I don't know what to think I, here. I think he's going to be like a Ruben Garrick type signing for Manly. Like, when Ruben Garrick left St. George, no one batted an eyelid. Even Dragons fans, like, I've gone back to their forum to try and find out anything on it. And he just left their under-20 system without a whimper and no one knew where he was. And now he's turned up setting records all over the Plus place and that free. yeah that ridiculous manly team can kick a goal really handsome as well i think ethan bullymore is going to be like that you know no one's talked about this signing because some elite players have changed clubs this year i think this is the most elite players that have changed clubs in a very very long time a couple of names yeah, yeah but bullymore for mine is the value pickup of the year i like it i like it now look speaking of value melbourne storm they're they've all lost, about value. They've lost a pretty decent winger, and uh, they've picked one up who has all the raw talent and tools to be just as good, and that scares me. Yeah, look, I've, I've underlined on here Xavier Coates because Xavier Coates going to that Melbourne team in that system, in that structure, under Craig Bellamy, three years' time, he's the best winger in the comp. Frightening. Oh, they've absolutely had, frightening. They, they, Brenko Lee was, eh. Went to Melbourne, superstar. Yeah, premiership winner. Remus Smith, yeah, yeah, go down there. Nick Meaney, I put him here now. You crossed him out. Now, I agree, Coates is definitely their best signing. I wanted to discuss Meaney, but I don't think talent-wise he's quite in that level. I, I think Nick Meaney is a great pickup because they lost Nico Hines. Nico Hines. Yeah, so I think, you know, he's going to go in there and do a job for them, and he's going to be a very lightweight <laughs> version of what Mr. Hines... In a less good Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, still... Yeah, no, it's AIDS. Yeah, mm. but for mine, Xavier Coates, like this pickup, how the Broncos could just mess that up. You know, yeah, I don't know. Fantastic pickup. Craig Bellamy does it again. Kevin We're going to head across the Tasman now to the New Zealand Warriors. Now, look. Whatever you want to say about the Warriors, thank you for keeping us in the competition. Uh, thank you for taking Chad Towns. Over. Yeah, you know, thank you for uh, lots of things that you've done. But why did you take Sean Johnson back? You couldn't wait to get rid of him. You released him early from his contract. You said, it, you know, you bashed him out the door. And then you rolled out the red carpet for him to come back. They needed a clever, fast, kicking sort of player that Sean Johnson used to be. Yeah. Don't forget, Johnson's coming off a year that was pretty terrible, to be honest. He was probably our third best half. Now, considering the money we're paying him, he should have been up here. He had been in the future. It's worth repeating. But he's broken. He's yep. always injured. And he spent half of last year going on Fox Sports saying, you know, whinge, whinge, whinge. Don't like this one, but in terms of quality, it's there. Yeah, look, for, for the things that Sean Johnson can't do anymore, the things that he can do is repeat sets, uh, long clearing kicking game, his defense is still really good. The things that Sean Johnson can't do now is win your game off the back of individual brilliance. Like we, so many times we were in close games and we just expected Sean to just step, step, step and he dropped the ball or he looked disinterested. Yeah, I don't know. And you know, I know he's going back to New Zealand, close to his family, close to his partner's family. I wouldn't have taken him back. It's a feel good story. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, let's leave it there. Newcastle Knights, Terry. Couple of signings. Nothing earth-shattering. I've written Dane Gagai, which I still believe is a good signing, but not what they needed. Oh, I mean, yes and no. Is, is he what they... Like, can you knock back a quality centre at this day and age? Probably not, no, to be honest. No, you can't. It's a fair centre pairing with Batman Best. Yeah, look, oh, I kind of wish they'd picked up Jake Clifford you know, now, because then you could turn around and say it's definitely Jake it's Clifford. Clifford. yeah. I mean, Adam Clune sounds like he's going to be their halfback. I don't know. I don't know. It's got to be Dan Gagala. I think they fall out of the eight just quietly. Yeah, Mitchell Pierce is a... Like, if you want to talk about the biggest loss for any team, yeah, it's Mitchell Pierce. Pierce is right up. Um, Nothing much good coming out of Newcastle, and I love it. Yeah, I, I don't... That's going to make me pop, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't mind the, uh, the Dan Gagala... What I, what I think that they need to do, though, is move on from this Bradman Best is going to be an elite player. Yeah, I think we need to forget that one. Yeah. Watch him kill us now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He, he, Four tries. Standard. Uh, North Queensland Cowboys. Look, 
It's not Chad Townsend. You ruined my fun. It's going to make it sound like it was, but obviously it's not. Yeah. Because he is a terrible football player. He is the worst signing of the off-season. Although, if you can get him for about 400k, which I believe they have. No, double. Do with mean? a car. What do you mean, double with a car? Double with a car. Dreadful signing. Uh, one that went under the radar that you actually put down here, Dan. Petty Hiku, that's a good signing. Oh, I like it. Hiku's the kind of player that you can throw in the centres and know what you're going to get. Now, they're going to lose a centre in the hammer because he's going to play fullback. He's going to be a superstar next year. Mm-hmm. They're going to have two really good players and, like, 26 really bad ones. So. Yeah, I, not much hope for the Cowboys. When I'm writing them off for the next five years. Yeah. Uh, Parramatta Eels. That's a five-year plan I want to be a part of. <laughs> uh, look, Parramatta, um, they've signed, like, no one. Bailey Simonson. Who? No, I actually quite. I, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna do a bit, but I actually quite like this pickup. Yeah. So I was saying off camera, this is one of those signings that could be up there in the the Papa League kind of things. Yeah. Um. Look, Campbell wanted to get rid of him. They wanted Kochik back, and they they had to give him up to get the signing over the line. I like it for Parramatta, and he's the kind of player that you're probably not going to find in the Blake Ferguson, which I think is good. Yeah. Look, in terms of. You know, you, you did get a lot out of Fergo when he was on the field. You get yardage, you get, you know, power play. Not a bad defender, but there's lots of loose ends to Fergo's game. He can drop he can drop a bomb. He can make loads Fine, of errors. Yeah. Simmonson's like, you know, he reminds me a lot of the old manly winger Michael Robertson. That's good chat. Yeah, scores loads of tries, just does his job. Probably never going to play rep football, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a handy pickup for the Eels. i tell you who's not their best signing, Curtis Scott. <laughs> uh, the, look, Penrith Panthers. The Penny Panthers, the Rain. Premiership Panthers, and don't they love to repeat that? Yeah, look, and, and I think they will repeat that. Don't you dare. I think they will repeat that. Now, look, Penrith didn't need to go to the market because their New South Wales Cup team was in the top three. The Jersey flag team was in the top three. We know they love their junior nursery. It's one of the, I think, I think I read that that premiership winning team had the most local juniors in it for a very, very long time. They're going back to their nursery. However, one of the things that the Panthers didn't have was good halves cover or, you know, they had Matt Burton during the origin period. But now they've gone out and replaced that again with Sean O'Sullivan. I like this. And he's a local. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Penrith so much. Yeah. And, um, look, this is, this is a brilliant pickup. Yeah. This is one of those things you look, geez, the Warriors need a half. Sean O, he's gone to Penrith. He's left the Warriors to go. You just, you hate yeah. to see it. I think he'll play plenty of football. Dare I say he takes the Tyrone May and improves them. Yeah, I, I, I don't see that. I think Mitch Kenny's going to take that Tyrone May spot. It's fish, yeah? I, yeah, but... That improves him. Yeah, but in, in terms of um, the player that Sean O'Sullivan is and what he can do, like, Sean O'Sullivan can go and sit in the New South Wales Cup team and have that Penrith, that Penrith team coming first. Oh, and at the same time, he's getting his match fitness. He's around the, you know, the top squad, 18th, 19th man, always ready to go. It's it, it's an astute signing for Penrith. I hate him so much. Yeah, Cleary doesn't make many bad decisions. No, and, uh, he doesn't. Yeah, this is a good one. Speaking of bad decisions, the Rabbitohs have signed terribly. Yeah, and speaking of bad decisions, like Cody Walker throwing intercepts to lose a grand final, who have they picked up? That happened. I wrote Havili. Now I like this. I like this guy. Yeah, I he's, he's not going to play much first grade, it, first up, because they've got a pretty handy hooker. He's the kind of player that if you need to take Cook off, you can give him five or ten minutes in, but he's going to play in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, they, are, they are lacking some, some size and some experience in the middle. Got a lot of young kids coming through. South's going to be a very good football team this year. I like the signing, but it's not groundbreaking. No, so look, I, I think South's going to drop out of the top four this year. I think the loss of Adam Reynolds. Humongous. Uh, some forwards. Jaden Sewell, you know, that's a, that's a target on the edge there for him as well. And uh, Wayne Bennett not being there. This is uh, Demetrio's first year of coaching. Um, yeah, look, I, I don't know who the Rabbitohs picked up. I don't know if any other elite talent went there. Well, there's one player who's got plenty of runs on the board, Milford. Yeah, but his contract's not registered. It doesn't count. Exactly right. Yeah, Havili for mine is their, their pickup. Me too. Now, Terry. Mm-hmm. The Dragons have signed nine players. Multiple times I've written two or three names down, scratched off, changed. I had to scratch and claw to find one quality signing of the nine. Oh, there's Jayden only one. Sewer. Yeah, there is only Jaden Sewer. Look, 
They needed forwards. They really did need forwards. Jaden Sewell, you know, Jaden Sewell, when they got him, that's a, that's a good pickup. And then you go and put Aaron Woods, Burgess, G- uh, Gachowski. Oh, it's very ordinary. Yeah, it's not, now, look, it's not, not looking good for the Dragons. Any tears out of me for no. Dragons. They beat us at one time. Now we must stomp them into paste. They didn't even beat us last year. <laughs> and they took Woodsy off their hands. Yeah. Look, Sue is a good player, and I think he'll play a lot of first. Yeah, of course. He I think he's, I think he's an origin player as well. Yeah. So. But they said we don't want Tarek Sims anymore because of blah 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 blah, and then go on and signed out the the Queensland version of Tarek Sims. I don't get what's happening at that club. I don't get what's happening either. But we do love our good mate Matty Elliott. We do love you, Matty. Um, now the Roosters. The Roosters have signed arguably the most important player in the NRL competition because anywhere he goes, he wins a premiership. This, this is money. So you were telling me off camera about 500k. A bit too much. Look, I didn't. I don't know if you can put a price on a premiership. Here we are. In, in terms of another player going there, Connor Watson, maybe, but. Again, Connor Where does he play? Yeah, he doesn't have a position for mine. He's not going to play in the halves. He's not going to be their number nine. It's great signing. Plays probably starting in six or seven teams, but not the Roosters. And look, probably by the time that this gets released, I don't know, Melbourne will do something ridiculous and release Brandon Smith and he'll go to the Roosters and obviously that would be the best signing for him. But for now, for me, it's Paul Lomorowski. Done. I've had to change legs because we're going to talk about something very serious. The West Tigers. Yeah. Signed pretty well. No, they didn't. Fair call. But... In terms of their best signing, I think there's two or three that are okay. I think young Oliver Guildhart. Well, he's not young. Let's start off with that. He's 28 years old. And younger than me. And he's never played uh, NRL. Uh, coming out from the UK where Pommy Bucks don't go really well over here. Like Ryan Hall has scored the most tries in Super League history. Couldn't, Did, score, couldn't one. score one try. Mm-hmm. Matt Ikevalu on the other wing scored five. Yeah, look, that's true. Uh, I don't think Oliver Guildhart is a good signing at all. For the money they paid Tyron and Peachy, I don't find that to be a good, good uh, value signing either. I'm going to go with Jackson Hastings because they actually need a half that can do something. They certainly do. I think my Wigan signing is better than your Wigan I don't signing. think he is. But the reason I didn't my, put Hastings in... My Wigan signing is a man of steel. Your Wigan signing is a sook. <laughs> well, never thought I'd be defending a Tigers player. Or a So bomb. I won't. Talk to me, Dan. My favourite time of the week. Time Home talk. time. Some sharks. Now, I'm going to keep this so you don't steal my ideas. We're going to name our team, our round one team, our one to 17. Not necessarily the best team, but no. the team we expect and want to run out for round yeah, one. Yeah, the, the, the team that we think Fitz is going to pick, a couple of surprise selections, but a definite safety net in there. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely now, right. Now, we, we may or we may not agree. I haven't seen your side and you won't be seeing mine. Uh, so let's see where it ends up. One thing I do think we'll agree on, though, is the fullback. Yeah, oh, I mean, I think the back line is going to pick itself. I think the forwards are going to pick itself. I disagree. You disagree? I disagree. Okay. The back line, the fullback for mine, it's our player of the year. It's Will Kennedy. Done. No further Absolutely discussion no. needed. Right, first winger, Sione Katoa. Done. There we go. Senna, Ronaldo Molotalo. Okay, now, I said Ramin because so I thought you said Ramin. I agree that yeah. Ronaldo will be in the centres round yeah. one. As he should be. Yeah, Ronaldo and Jesse Romero are the centres for mine. Weaponry, power, yep. speed, evasiveness, scoring potential, aggression, something you can't say that we've had an abundance in our centres. And, and the fact of the matter is, apart from Jesse Ramian, we don't have a game-breaking centre. There isn't anything on the market. Paul Momorowski would have been okay. We were linked to him. Go on, instead of going to find one, create one. Ronaldo Molotalo, come on, step on up. Couldn't agree more. Now, we've, we've got we've got Cini, we've got Lockie Miller, etc., etc. Yeah. For me, no. there's only one name, and it is Ronaldo Molotov. Yeah. Which opens up a wing spot. For Matty Cavallo. Yes. There's, yeah. a re- there's a reason why Fitz signed him. Exactly. Right. When he got him out of his contract early, for a reason. If you'd said that six months ago, I would have said no. Icavalo's not playing first grade. Looking at what he's done in training, looking mm. at the size, looking at his stats, really, other than mm. I scored five tries against some team in the last minute. Yeah. He's a beast. Yeah, 16 tries in 15 games, 151 metres, eight tackle breaks. Defensively really sound. One of the things about Matty Cavallo is he's got errors in his game. All wingers do. That's what happens when you face high balls. That's, that's exactly yeah. right. Um, and look, yeah. Ronaldo isn't exactly, you know, he's good. He's but good. he's not. He's know, not safe, you know. Level. Yeah, so for mine, there's a reason we got Matty Cavallo, and that's to make Ronaldo Molotalo a centre, not only for us, 
but for New Zealand. That is a weaponry back That five. is a very, very I'm good back five. five eight. This is where there will be contention. Not for Round me. one, Matt Moylan. Round one for me is Matt Moylan. Does that mean number seven is? Braden Trindle. Nico Hines. Hines. Yeah, for mine, Nico Hines is, is going to play seven. Uh, Moylan's going to play six. Moylan won't be there all year because, I, I mean, if you get 24 games out of Moylan at six, we're probably going to finish top four because we did it before. But uh, no, it, it'll only be a matter of time before Braden Trindle is our halfback and Nico goes back to the six. But to start off with, he'll be our seven. That's where I expect most comments to come. Yeah, I absolutely think right. Everyone will name Hines at and, six. And Trindle. After a month of football, I agree, and I think that's where we're headed yep. long term. I think Trindle's kicking game is far superior to either option. But round one, you can't throw Nico into a new side and say, it's yours, your heart, you know, you got to do everything. You got to throw Moylan in. He's got all the experience in the world. And he's got he the was link. our best half when he was on the field last yeah. year. Yeah, he's got the link with Kennedy. He's got the link with Ronaldo and Jess as well. So, yeah, no, I really. Well, I like think that. they'll be a dangerous half. I, look, we we got to be patient. Yeah, and the, but this this for mine is only because Fitz is going to turn around, as you said, and not. If you throw Ronaldo in, in at three and you also throw Hines and Trindle together, I think he's just going to want that safety of Moylan. Yeah, it, d- it does make us susceptible with only one kicking game. However, what Moylan brings to the team if he's fit, yeah, I'm going to go there. Exactly right. Props? Yeah, props. For me, this is easy. Fanuk and Rudolph. Rudolph. Yeah. I, c- I can see people people online have been saying, you know, you start Hamlin, Newelli, et cetera, et cetera. No. You start your best two props, and they're our best two props. Yeah, Hamlin, Newelli was great coming off the bench last year. And the thing is, with Hamlin, Newelli, and Rudolph, they become interchangeable. Fanuk is the lock at prop. Oh, uh, nicely see done. What there. I agree. Now, again, there's going to be people that disagree yeah. with this. They're going Please to say disagree Fanuk with can this. play 13. Toby missed a mountain of tackles. No. Not in the middle, he didn't. No. He missed those tackles when he was forced to play too many minutes mm-hmm. at 13 when we had injuries. Yep. This 40 coach, minute prop. Sir Fitz, won't let that happen. No, nah, he will turn Rudolph into a either 18th man or on the bench for the New South Wales. That's what he'll do with Toby. <laughs> Number nine <laughs> speaks for itself. We re signed him. It's Blake Braley. Done. Easy. Yep. That won't change. Although there is a player that we will discuss later who will put pressure on, but not in the early rounds. Uh, back row. Now, look, I've, I've tossed and turned on this one, but I'm going to go with safety first and pick Wade Graham, Britton Nakora. Has to be. Has yep. to be. Now, there's a player that I'm going to name who Teague. will play plenty of first grade football. You don't know where Wade Graham's at fitness wise, but if he's fit, he has to play. Yeah. He's the captain, of course. But he's not the wild card for mine. Talakai is, but Talakai needs to. Bring himself back up. And the lock for mine, I was not excited about this signing, but geez, over the off-season, I think he's just about my favourite player right now. He hasn't played a game for us, but Cam McInnes Cam is Cam McInnes, he's got his teeth fixed, his yeah. arms are humongous. He's the perfect. He looks he, like us. He, well, yeah, he's learnt. He's an Adonis. He is going to be a superstar for us. Oh. Not in terms of he's going to make 1,000 line breaks, but he's going to do exactly what we need. He's my pick for the Porter Gallon medal. Love it. Oh, yeah, he's won, what, seven in a row at the top yep. of the... Uh, where'd he come from? The Dragons. Yeah, the Dragons. Uh, bench. I'm going to go for first cap off the rank, Braden hamlin Early. Agreed. Second, Jack Williams. Agreed. I've seen plenty of people name their sides and know Jack Williams. What are you doing? He was our best forward last year. Easily. Hands down. Third cap off the rank for mine, CC for Talakai. Agreed. Now. This is the contentious point between you the, and I. This is a big one. I've written something and you've written something beside it. And I don't like it. That's fine, because I don't like you half the time. Teague Wilton. Braden Trindle. Why? For mine, it's the fact that Moylan and Hines, if it doesn't work and you don't have Connor Tracy in the centres, what do you do? You can move McInnes to nine and give Braley a crack in the halves, or Trindle has shown that he can come off the bench, play that roving position. He can, you know, he can defend like a forward. Tackles by himself. Yeah, he, does. he can just come on and do whatever he needs to. Or if Moylan's having a shocker, or is hurt, or if Trindle, uh, if Nico needs some help, Trindle comes in. Look, I like your thinking, but I think in that case you got to play Connor Tracy. He plays. Nah, Connor Tracy many, doesn't have what Trindle many has. Many more positions, and you can throw any injury. Anywhere across the park, except prop, you can throw Connor in. The, the, the thing for mine with Connor Tracy is if you're picking him to play center or winger, if there's an injury to the centers, Talakai has shown that he can do it. Nakora can go and do that job for you. If there's an injury in the halves and you have to put Connor Tracy in there, he's a very, very ordinary half. He's a terrible number nine. 
he's absolutely disgraceful at number nine, whereas Braden Trindle's service at number nine is good. His service at seven is great. His kicking game is awesome. And if he does have to go in the forwards, he defends a lot better than Connor as well. So if there's an injury to the backs, you have Talakai and Nakora who can go and do that job for you. I know that you can turn around and say Wade Graham could go and play in the halves if there was an injury in there, but that limits us as well. Imagine a Wade Graham, Matt Moyle and halves combination. Look, it really hurts me. Speed and creativity is there. Trindle's, Trindle's the bench player for mine. Wilton I, misses out. I don't hate what you're saying at all, but I don't like picking on a team on what if this, this, and this happens. For me, you pick your best 17, and, and T. Wilton's definitely in that. I think he's going to push... He, for mine, he pushed Nakora out of the side last yeah, year. Yeah, and he'll do it again this year because Nakora is going to not have Sean Johnson to make him look like a superstar. So Nakora either needs to turn himself into a superstar or go and play for Newtown. I'm picking that Fitz is going to pick safety nets in this game. His first safety net is Matt Moylan. His second safety net is Britton Nakora. And his third safety net is Braden Trindle on the bench. Fair call. Let us know. What about the players that miss out? For me, Trindle, yep. Tracy, Fafida, and yeah. Pele. Lockie mm. Miller, Metcalf, Tolman, Beryl, Hunt. A couple of those players could be there by round three or four. Yeah, look, Royce Hunt is probably the glaring one for mine because, you know, he's shown that when he when he's up and he's ready for it, I think he's going to be sort of our 18th man. Um, for mine, Teague Wilton is the one who misses out. Connor Tracy, look, he was Mr. Fix-It last year. He was one of our top players. But as evolution goes, your teams have got to get better and, if, if you've got a squad full of Connor Tracys that aren't playing, you're in a good position. But if you've got a squad full of Connor Tracys that are playing, you're the West Tigers. So I really, really think that Fitz is going to take some gambles and pick some safety. Let us know. Let us know. Dan, it's time for Top Sport Tips. So Brought to you by our friends at Top Sport. Giving them a few weeks off, although I got them uh, quite quite well this morning on the Cowboys. They gave them a little How bit of a start. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? Thanks for the double up. Yeah. Very, very good. Two tips this week, Terry? I am going to take two games. Look, I'm two games behind you at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the way it's going to stay. Yeah. Hope you're getting ready to get embarrassed. Couple of weeks. It all ends. When the, when the trials start, I believe. It's the end of the trials before round one, so that's... The round one, the preview show, that's when you're going to see me get to embarrass Terry. Absolutely. Now, look, I'm gonna, I am going to pick the two games. You've got the one. I think you're taking college football? No, I'm not. No. I'm, I am so confident on my one tip that I'm going to go double in. Although, speaking of college football, go Georgia. Uh, so the first game that I'm going to pick, I'm going to go a little bit outside the scope. I'm going to pick an NBL game just for Banner. We missed basically a whole round of COVID-related NBL this year, uh, this round. This week, what a bugger, but uh, yeah, the game that was on today was an absolute cracker. Congratulations to the New Zealand Breakers for getting their first win. I am going to pick the Wollongong Hawks to not only beat the Sydney Kings on Thursday night, but they're going to cover the line. Wollongong are exceptional at home. Second best team in the competition for mine at the moment. I think the Sydney third on the ladder, but that's just because South East Melbourne have played a few more games. I want to pick the Hawks to comfortably beat their crosstown rivals, the Sydney Kings, who are a shambles this year. Should win the comp and win it easily, absolutely, absolute shambles. Hate to hear it after I spent $1,000 on my new Kings hat. One tip for me, and that is the Sydney Derby. Those sixes, who are running scared, mind you, cheese online, they're copping some heat as they should are running from the, the rampant Sydney Thunder. We're six in a row, we're gonna be seven in a row before we, we play the pink. Saturday night, SCG, they got the home ground advantage despite the Melbourne bubble. We're still gonna smash them. It's eight in a row, is it? We're gonna smash them sixes. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And, oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. The second game for mine. Take it straight. Thunder. My Oklahoma City Thunder, in and out of form at the moment, but I am gonna pick them to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers Sunday our time, Saturday night in America. Thunder double up. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by our friends at Puncture Media, Top Sports and Zero Fucks Clothing. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, jump on there. Comments. We want lots of comments this week about mm. what we've said about our signings. Mine's better. The Cronulla Sharks, uh, one to seventeen. Who's going to miss out? And who isn't? 
Uh, trash Dan and I in the comments, we absolutely love it. We've been getting a lot of hate mail. Oh, Dan, Dan's been yeah. dancing. Dan has been dancing. Uh, and uh, Dan, let's dance this all the way out. Rugby league, baby!